Welcome to the MA Junkie Rankings Report for February 26, 2020. My name is John Morgan. Gorgeous George Garcia, our rankings chair with me as always. And let's just jump right into it. UFC Auckland, big storylines there. A handful of ranked fighters on there, some that might be ranked. And, of course, that main event, absolute classic there. Uh, Dan Hooker edged out Paul Felder. I mean, incredibly close fight. Uh, and it definitely had some implications in the lightweight division. Hooker came in at 15. Felder came in at 10. Hooker gets the result just barely. What do you end up doing with these two guys, George? All right, so Dan Hooker has won three in a row now. But look at the names, man. Vic, when he was ranked, uh, he also beat Iaquinta, who at the time was so high we couldn't even reflect that in the head-to-head. -head. But now he's beating Paul Felder and enough's enough. I, you know, you got to make that move so that we, we reflect at least that head-to-head -head matchup. Paul Felder came in at number 10, so we're going to put Dan Hooker at number 10. Felder will fall down a spot, uh, as will Makachev, Oliveira, and Ferreira. Speaking of those three, those three are working on six-fight win streaks, John, and those are not easy to come by, especially at 155. But if you look, none of those can match up to Vic, Iaquinta, and Felder, and so that's pretty much the reason why he skated right past them. And, and Barbosa, who's kind of on a little bit of a, a spell where he's losing fights and moving to featherweight. But that one was tough, man. We could have definitely saved those guys and just maybe move Felder down, but it's the quality of opposition. No, I, I like it, man. There's some there's some depth in the lightweight division for sure. But I think what I really like is that I think we're all saying Paul Felder's stock shouldn't slip much after nope. a performance like that. And with just one spot down, it really doesn't. And then there's something poetic about those two guys being linked together at 10 and 11 right there because I think those yeah. guys are going to be linked together for a long time, man. That was a phenomenal fight. All right, Cobain event. Jimmy Crute. Not sure if you'd heard of him before, but Jimmy Crute picks up a win over Mihail Olio. Hey, check. Chuck, nice. Jake, Chuck, yep. okay. <laughs> we got there. Uh, listen, got the got the Cobain event victory and uh, makes it an appearance on our on our rankings for the first time. Yeah, exactly. And you know he referenced Misha Serkinov. He wants to run that one back. Serkinov's already in the honorable mention, so we'll just pretty much stop stop his ascent there from nowhere land to the honorable mention. Uh, someone's got to go though, right? Either Jiri uh, Prochaska or Ryan Span. I like Span's win uh, win streak that he has. It's like seven deep, five in the UFC. So does Jerry, right? He has one too, except his is outside the UFC. And as much love as you want to give him, because I think he's on a great run, he's beating some quality names. Those quality names are now known as UFC veterans. They're outside the UFC, so they're not peaking per se, even though they're respectable opponents. And Crute's getting it done in the UFC. And, and he's looking so good. I mean, he's smashing. So. Going to give him a little bit of love there. I dig it. Big rebound win for him. And, man, he's so young, so early in his career. So, nice little honorable mention right on the outside looking in, but ready to attack that list for sure. Uh, flyweight division. Kai Kawar France, victorious at flyweight. He already was an honorable mention. Now he gets to move into the uh, the official part of the list. Exactly. And, again, this division is something that we've referenced a lot where it's just kind of been either a little bit non-existent or some fighters had to go to Bantamweight to cash some checks. Some had to leave the UFC or some were asked to leave the UFC. So it's a little bit in disarray, but it's starting to come together for one a world champ will be crowned on saturday and as you trickle down you'll see that some of the guys are starting to get their activity up we're starting to create contenders but anyway to answer this yeah he's going to sail right by guys that have just been inactive or on losing streaks like nicholas nicolau excuse me matthias nicolau uh ben win uh wilson hayes ali bagotinov and we'll stop him right behind dustin ortiz who's got a respectable resume at flyweight so he'll come in at number 12 we'll, 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 that's where we'll put kaikara france i like it guy with a lot of hype behind him and he wants to deliver on that uh then we look over at the ladies side a couple of straw weights were in action uh both of them were honorable mentions coming in so they've got a chance to make an impact with tie course about yan Jianan and angela hill uh who both picked up big wins this weekend yeah, you know, what Hill's doing is amazing. She's won like three in a row, I believe, uh, and four and two in her last six. Uh, but she's not beating the upper echelon yet. But still, she's on that radar. Heck, at one point she had fallen off. Uh, and we're going to leave her be at, at this moment. However, we're going to focus on Yan Shanan, who really, really, really looked good in her fight. And she's got a great record. Great UFC record, great uh, overall record. We'll put her at number 13, right behind Marina Rodriguez. Once again, Alexa Grasso's, Tisha Torres, Lavinia Souza working off losses, so they have to step aside. And now Souza can finally be right where Hill is. I've, I've kind of paired them two ever since that great fight they had out in Invicta in Costa Mesa back in 2016. So now it all starts to make sense. Yeah, no doubt about it. Yan Zanan, man, she looks like a potential title contender down the line. Oh, so yeah. nice to see her making that ascent. All right, well, listen, that wraps it up for this week. Uh, the USC, of course, is in Norfolk this weekend, as you mentioned. A title is on the line, so you know, guaranteed movement there Women's in the flyweight the rankings. Too. Yeah. And I was going to say, there's some other big ones nice as well. Job. So we'll see how it all gets impacted next week on the rankings report.